Generative art is really about thinking about artwork systematically. It's about designing a process that actually creates the artwork. You as the artist are focused on that system, on that process, rather than on an individual image that might come out of it. You purposefully relax your grip on that final image, allowing for randomness to play a role in exactly what comes out and exactly what image is produced by that system. The computer really Im implicitly shapes and affects every thing that's created with it. I'm very interested in exploring visually how these primitive constructs of, of loops and arrays and the basic elements that go into computer hardware, what kind of effect they have on the types of images that we can create with them. My biggest influences artistically have, have really always been painters that find a way to work methodically and that really tend to focus on sort of a systematic approach to our work. Richard Diebenkorn, particularly his Ocean Park series of paintings. Agnes Martin, drawings on a clear day. Bridget Riley. There are all these painters that we don't normally associate with generative artwork, but there's really a strong generative element to, to how they create their work. You know, I, I grew up uh, drawing and painting, and that's really the artist that I admired most. But I also studied computer science, and I worked as a programmer, and programming became a really big part of my life, and it really shaped my preference for how to create things. What was coming out of the computer from these programs was so uh, clean and sharp and perfect, really. So there was a, a really wide difference between these two worlds. Why is digital artwork so different from physical artwork? Almost every piece of artwork I create involves an algorithm in some way. I'm very fond of starting with an algorithm and finishing with the physical piece of work in order to kind of give it a little more warmth and approachability. One of the best ways to take an algorithmic design and to translate it into the physical world is to use a plotter or some other mechanical system. To me, it's really fascinating what kind of traces does the machine leave versus working by hand. What happens when you really find a way to integrate those two? So the QQL algorithm introduces variety across a number of different dimensions. Some of the most straightforward ones are around things like scale, working with very small shapes versus large shapes. Around density, are things really tightly packed? Are they more sparse? The pay show is really both a celebration of QQL and an examination of ways to integrate the hand and the machine in creating a painting. I'm interested in creating physical works partially because of the flaws and imperfections that the physical process introduces. I, I find that really enriches the work and adds a beautiful element to it. We're working with physical objects. This also introduces sort of a three-dimensional aspect, a textural aspect. And so there are all these sort of uh, rich details about the exact way that the, the paint was shaped and, and moved. One of the things that I really appreciate about the opportunity to show this work with Pace is, first of all, it's in such a beautiful environment. And it, it's in the kind of environment that I think will help people to really slow down and take their time with the work. Some work can be much more successful in that physical space compared to the digital environment. And so this really gives me the opportunity to show a type of work and a type of image that I might not be able to work with otherwise.